I hope y'all paid attention to what the prior speaker had to say about transportation. The Mississippi Department of Transportation is responsible for providing a safe, intermodal transportation network that is planned, designed, constructed, and maintained in an effective, cost-efficient, and environmentally sensitive manner. That's the formal stated mission of the Mississippi Department of Transportation. But I want you to tell me how do you plan, design, construct, and maintain an effective, cost-efficient, environmentally sensitive system of transportation when your resources are limited to standard of funding set 31 years ago? I don't care how smart you are, how efficient you are, or how lucky you are, that won't work. It's amazing to me that the job that is done is done as well as it has. The staff of the Mississippi Department of Transportation, under the leadership of our director, Melinda McGrath, has been able to accomplish what we have with the limited resources available. That's remarkable. And it's a poor frog that doesn't brag on his own pond. And I'm gonna brag on my pond today. These state employees at MDOT have been recognized by a national study for doing the sixth best job of all state DOTs for managing the funds on hand. But you can't replace over a thousand deficient bridges and 5,000 lane miles of deteriorated highways with this cost, that'll cost $4 billion when you're using 1987 money. You say, all right already. You told us that last year. Yeah, I did. And the year before that, and the year before that. And every year it's costing you money. Well, you say, who can fix it? I'll get to that in a minute. Before that, please allow me a personal observation and concern. My family has been in Mississippi for seven generations before there was a state of Mississippi. And my family, probably like your family, has survived some very difficult economic periods. And we have experienced some years of promise. But in my 42 years of public service, I don't recall a time when I have been so concerned with our lack of a solid plan for our economic future. Since the recession in 2008, Mississippi GDP has grown 3.4%. The national GDP has grown 17%. And the adjoining state the GDP has grown over 10%. You are told that our unemployment is now at a record low. But you're not told that many of our highly qualified have left. I see these young people here, and this is what really kills me. We are leading the nation in the loss of our millennial population. Mississippi had the highest out-migration rates in the nation for people younger than 40 with a college degree. Listen to this, nearly 10,000 more American-born people left this state than moved here from July 2016 to July 2017. The average population change across 12 southern states was plus 33,000. What does this have to do with our lack of a plan for an up-to-date intermodal system of transportation? absolutely everything. Just last week, I read of a new ranking of America's top states for business in 2018. Once again, infrastructure was listed as a key issue in the criteria used for determining that ranking. Mississippi's infrastructure was listed, was listed as 41st out of 50. This is the same highway system that not long ago was judged to be the sixth best in the nation and number one in the Mid-South. But it doesn't do to build the biggest and the best if you don't provide the resources to properly maintain them. 
when are we going to have the vision to embark on something as politically terrifying as planning for the future? Yes, the business sector does expect government to do that. Ken Lagon, that gentleman is the, is the founder of Home Depot, and he says about the role of government, you need cops, you need the military, and you need infrastructure. Now, back to your question, who can fix it? The answer, those who control the money. And who controls the money in Mississippi? The legislature, along with the concurrence of the government. A fellow by the name of William James put it so well when he said nothing is so fatiguing as the eternal hanging on of an uncompleted task. This one has been hanging on for 31 years. Of course, the legislature is made up of two bodies, House of Representatives and the Senate. To their credit, the leadership of the House has made a number of attempts to deal with this serious problem of our deteriorating roads and bridges. Not so with the Senate. The one attempt made by the Senate leadership was something called the Bridge Bill, which was a political attempt to trick you into thinking that $600 million may fall out of the sky. And in taking money from the Mississippi Department of Transportation and putting it under control of the next governor would solve the problem. The political, the poor, this, 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 this document, this Senate bill, was over 300 pages long, and the members of the Senate were given less than 24 hours to consume it. It's my sincere prayer that this time, if the governor calls a special session of legislature, Senate leadership will arrive with an attitude of cooperation and a desire to finally find a solution. Speaking, speaking of leadership, our governor does say that he hopes to call for a special session of the legislature this month. I hope he'll announce that tomorrow. I'm told that a number of options will be considered for the funding of our infrastructure, such as uh, a diversion of the sales tax on internet sales, which is now uh, something to do, the possible enactment of a lottery, and possibly the proceeds from the newly authorized sports game. Any or all of this would help. But allow me to once again, as I have done every year for the last few years, state the need for a dependable, predictable source of funding. The building or reconstruction of a highway project can sometimes take five to 10 years from conception to construction. The Philadelphia Bypass has been on conception for 20 years. This requires absolute certainty for year-to-year -year stable funding. And the best way to provide that stable funding is the way we have been providing it. That's with the fuel tax. This remains the fairest and most predictable tax. The user pays. Those driving over the roads and bridges pay for the roads and bridges. Yes, including those out-of-state 18 wheelers passing through the state. More than 20 other states have adjusted their fuel tax in the last four years. Mississippi last did it a generation ago. No, I'm not talking and I'm not suggesting that they go up 20 cents in fuel tax overnight like Exxon does. I'm suggesting that two to three cents per gallon per year for a set number of years. And I cannot overemphasize the need for a stable, predictable source of funding. Today, we literally don't have enough money to even properly mow the grass. Hopefully, when I'm back here next year, I'll be preaching a sermon of progress made, not again opportunities missed. Thank you.